day of Booker, as you can see, I'm typing again, trying to get this book out. <laughs> It's, 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 this one is a little more harder than the last one because I've already established the characters I want to build up. Now i got to find things, more things for them to do. I thought you might be interested in hearing something with a little more action. Last ones haven't had a whole lot. So this one's called Lost and Found. I'll read it to you and then do me a favor, leave some comments, let me know what you think. Um, if you think it's not got enough or I'm missing something, or if you know the procedures for some of these things that I write about and I'm making some serious mistakes, let me know. So let's get on with it. Rocky was cleaning the courthouse. Talbot had taken the squad car for doing the, his rounds. Agnes was keeping Rocky company. She was insisting on making the jail cells more comfortable. Rocky had already tried to explain that he didn't want people to feel comfortable in the cells, but she was insistent that just because you were incarcerated did not mean you weren't still a person. Anyways, very few people use the cells anymore, and those that did were for misdemeanors and not major. Rocky allowed a few decorative pillows, but nothing else. She objected until he explained the possible consequences of some of her other items. Rocky turned the mobile radio up higher. If Talbot called, he wanted to be sure he could hear it. Moving into the back, he cleaned under the cot, a place often overlooked, and dusted the shelves. A squelch from the radio caught his attention. Talbot to Rocky, come in. Rocky rushed in and grabbed the mic. Reading it loud and clear, go ahead. Copy. I'm at the lake with Miss Lewis. She has a class of 24 here. One is missing, Theo by name. I've done a scout around with no luck. Roger, so far, which lake and do you require assistance? Affirmative, get over here to the fishing lake. Copy, heading out now. We'll meet you at your location in five or better. Copy, over now. Agnes heard and had the truck warmed up with a portable police light suction cup to the top and siren blaring, Rocky tore off. All right, oh, excuse me. <laughs> Arriving at the lake, Talbot showed them what they were up against. Agnes stayed with the children while Miss Lewis agitatedly showed Rocky where they had been before she noticed Theo was missing. We are all over here by this opening looking for animal tracks. I was explaining how you could tell what animals were around by looking at the prints. In a little patch, she had placed markers with pictures of the animals the prints were from. Nearby was a metal ring and a box of plaster for making molds. Did you notice Theo doing anything in particular? Oh yes, he was over here picking up feathers. She pointed to an area where a few feathers remained. His footprints were the only ones visible. Miss Lewis took the rest of the class back to school. When she returned, she was in tears. It had been necessary to call Theo's parents and let them know the situation. They were on their way and were not happy. Rocky had the field glasses out and was up a tree overlooking as much as possible. It seemed almost impossible that the child was invisible. He was about to look around the area again to see if he could see more prints. Talbot shook his head. It's all grass and leaves from here back. Rocky had seen all there was to be seen and realized the search party was probably the best step. He needed a group of people quick, and he knew just where to find them. The hobo camp usually held about 15 people at a time. That would be sufficient for the moment. He had Talbot do a walk into the woods as far as possible using a zigzag approach to cover a wider area. Running to the truck, he tore off, sending rocks and pebbles flying, hoping his hobo friends were in residence. Hearing sirens, to find out what the problem was. Rocky explained quickly and the truck was filled with people in the cab and then back. They were at the lake in less than 10 minutes Rocky had figured out. Talbot returned when he had heard the siren. He had the Hobo Army spread out and starting their walk and search. With so short a time and getting the search party organized, Rocky felt fairly confident in a quick search find. With Talbot officiating the search, Rocky could contacted the federal office to place them on standby. He requested search dogs if they were available. 
It was informed that they were out and that alternates were two and a half hours away. That would be no fine Sunday set. The offer of a small aircraft was changed to a helicopter and that could cover a wider area fast and with better visibility. Rocky contacted Theo's parents and brought them to the site. We're calling in the federal office if needed and a chopper is in the air now for an overhead view that will cover as much area as possible. The cries of Theo were becoming fainter as the search team moved deeper. Overhead, the sound of a propeller announced the arrival of their overhead search team members. Theo's parents were understandably distressed and began to criticize Miss Lewis bringing such a large group with only one person. Ms. Lewis had asked the principal to vol allow volunteers to help, but this request had, been, had not been well received. The father was surprised. The board had already insisted that volunteers should be used. Rocky brought the parents to a squad car and maintained control. Ms. Lewis was having a hard time keeping herself together. On the back of the truck, Rocky laid out a map of the area and was working out search grid squares. Bill's father claimed an intimate knowledge of the forested area as well as knowing his son. He requested to be allowed to make a search on his own. Rocky gave him a spare brick and let him do his best. It might help at least to give the man something to do constructive. His wife went along calling as she went. Miss Lewis was telling Rocky everything she knew about Theo as he was marking out areas already searched. He is such an animal lover. Birds are his favorite, especially hawks. She laughed a little. He was so excited that he couldn't sleep at nap time. He sat there on his mat, wrapped up in his blanket, and chirped. Rocky looked up from his map. He was gathering feathers, he said. She nodded. He didn't take a nap? She shook her head. When he naps, he does he always wrap up like that? She smiled and nodded. He likes them to make a nest to lay in. She shook her head and wondered at the strange things her children did. Rocky to Talbot, come in. Talbot here, go ahead. Theo may be tired by now. I'm told if he is, he'd be sort of low nesting. Nesting? Talbot's voice showed he wasn't sure he had heard Rocky correctly. Furman, but likes to pretend he's a bird. Theo called out to check the low for a small area that might resemble a nest and to look for any feathers, also as he had been carrying a large find of them. Turning to Miss Lewis, he asked another question. When he naps, is he hard to wake up? Again, the smile. Oh, he's the hardest of them all. When he sleeps, he's sometimes so hard to wake up, I have to leave him in a corner. A couple of hours later, he usually gets up on his own. She stood unfounded, looking around helplessly. She finally collapsed on the ground, crying. Agnes comforted her as best she could. It was unfortunate, though not unexpected, that the school principal decided to pay a call. He was an officious individual who tried to take charge immediately upon arrival. Okay, where is everyone? Sheriff, you should have a large group here out looking for this child. It's been over an hour, and you're still setting up your control center. This won't do. I'll take it from here. He pulled the map off the truck and began Xing off areas to send people to. Rocky reclaimed his map and pen and explained the current situation. <clears throat> Sir, we already have a search party organized, and they are searching at this moment. We have a helicopter in the air, as you can hear. We have requested K-9 units, but they are over two hours away still. The man held his hand. I'm your walkie-talkie. I want to call everyone in so I can send them out more efficiently. Had you done this correctly at the start, the child would have been found by now. Rocky put his hand on his brick. Sir, I'm not calling you back, everyone, just so you can play big shot. We'd probably be going over areas already covered and wasting time if these marks you put on the map are an indication. I understand your concerns, but... Let me do my job and bring this child home. Rocky checked in with the helicopter and received a negative answer. Nothing so far. He checked with Theo's father. Again, negative. Rocky was trying to work out anything else they could do to increase their chances. Looking again for footprints wasn't going to help. The kids had been everywhere. There was no play equipment for them to hide in. 
playground was at the smaller lake and the location was surrounded by cottages. Forested area was sparse enough though they, they should be able to see him. Rocky was beginning to think something was missing in the way they were handling things. He realized they needed a more professional help fast. It would be getting darker and with darkness a chill would set in. They wanted someone with the knowledge and skill to find the child faster than they were doing. He looked over to find Agnes. She had Miss Lewis in the truck and they say when two souls are connected they can feel each other's look in their direction. She looked up at the same time as Rocky looked over. They say great minds also think alike and Agnes knew what she had to do. She rushed off home for Tucker. Returning soon, Tucker was excited and expected play again. The principal scoffed when he saw Tucker jumping and barking. Agnes led him to the area where the children had been grouped the last time Theo had been seen. Rocky had Tucker smell Theo's coat. Rocky had been training Tucker for police work away from uh, work from a manual he had found. Well, it was time to see if the training would pay dividends. Tucker smelt the coat and smelt the ground back and forth in front of the wooded area. He made a few advances, but wouldn't go far into the wooded area. Agnes tried to lead him, but the dog stayed stubbornly where he was and wanted to head over towards Rocky. Agnes was getting frustrated and felt Tucker hadn't been trained enough to be of use. It might be a little while, a long while, but they would have to wait for the federal agents and their canine units. She led Tucker towards the car. Principal is barking at Rocky again. We have a serious situation here, Sheriff, and you bring out an untrained, half-witted dog to the search. Total waste of time, and you should be ashamed of yourself. If you would listen to me, we could have wrapped this up immediately. I still say bring the people back and let's restart this the right way. Halfway to the car, Tucker pulled out his leash. Agnes was sternly telling him they were going. Pulling harder, he pulled the leash out of her hands and went running into the weeds, parking loudly. Just at the edge was a deer nest. Its sides were high enough that they couldn't see right away, and the grass in the center was flattened. Asleep in the center was Theo. It looked as if he had collected more feathers than they had thought, and he was almost covered in them. Tucker barking and licking woke him up. Theo was astonished at all the commotion around him. Miss Lewis was in tears, hugging him. Rocky called in the search party and notified the helicopter and the federal agency the child had been found. Theo's parents came in a run and thanked Rocky and Emma for finding Theo. With a full audience of laughs, the principal laid into Miss Lewis and her carelessness in allowing this to happen. He berated her on her lack of attention and threatened her with child endangerment. Theo's father handed the boy over to his wife and approached the principal. Mr. Backshider, you should recognize me since I'm president of the school board, and I seem to recall we told you one teacher on a field trip was not enough and that volunteer should be utilized for added security. You said it wasn't necessary and you didn't want untrained people watching over the students. We disagreed and instructed you to add volunteer requests to the paperwork sent out for field trips. His wife pulled one out of her purse and flourished it in the principal's face. Nothing about volunteers had been added. Considering what has happened and your continual ignoring of the board's instructions, I feel we will have to consider that. He took a deep breath and barked fiercely in the principal's face. You are fired! The principal slunk away, a beaten man. Rocky gathered the hobos together and treated them to a big dinner at the diner before taking them back to camp. The next day, Miss Lewis asked Rocky if he could bring the hobos and Tucker to the school auditorium. The hobos were a bit confused as to why they were being picked up. Fortunately, all the hobos that had helped that day were still there, and together with Tucker, they arrived at the, in state at the school. Miss Lewis had them all stand on stage. She explained who these men and women were and that they traveled the country looking for work never staying long in one place and always ready to tackle any opportunity. These people, as soon as they had heard about a lost child, had immediately volunteered for, to help. I think we owe them a show of thanks. 
The cheering was thunderous, and the hobos were all standing there red-faced, but proud they could have helped. Again, our Agnes led out Tucker as Miss Lewis continued. And a special thanks for our furry friend who found Theo. The auditorium empty, erupted in cheers again. Miss Lewis then said the words everyone was waiting for. <coughs> now, if everyone will follow me to the lunchroom, we'll have cake and ice cream for celebration. Okay, so that's all I've written on that chapter. That's close to all the chapters we've written so far. The next one I'm working on right now is when they visit a uh, an old one-room schoolhouse there that has been, uh, people have been saying that it's haunted. So the sheriff, deputy, and their wives are going to go there and take a look around and <coughs> see if there really are ghosts or if they're not, what's going on. So I'm still working on that. I may read that chapter two next time I, I do a reading. I hope you'll be around. Uh, like I said, if you know anything about search and recovery or search and rescue, and I wrote this wrong or left out a glaring omission, <coughs> I'd appreciate you letting me know. So that's it for today. I appreciate you being here. I look forward to having you listen in on the next one. Please, <coughs> please leave comments. Oh, I swear I'm getting cold. And I look forward to seeing you on the next reading. So thanks again for visiting. Please like and subscribe. i got a few, but I kind of like a few more friends on this thing. You have a good day, and I'll talk to you on the next reading. Probably about 40 years or so. Bye.